This episode is brought to you by the Evolve Artist Program. The Evolve Artist Program is a breakthrough training system designed to take inexperienced and amateur artists to confident, realistic artists, creating professional-grade work in just one year or less. If you've struggled with tutorials that are incomplete, that leave you hanging when you hit roadblocks, and leave your questions unanswered, Evolve is for you. If you're considering art school but don't want to go into debt to do so, Evolve is for you. Or if you went to art school but it let you down with inconsistent methods, Evolve is for you. All of your supplies are included. Premium oil paint is supplied by Old Holland. And all materials, including brushes, canvases, and photo references, are delivered right to your door anywhere in the world. Evolve is a complete A to Z system, including daily feedback on your assignments 365 days a year, live calls with working professional artists, and a supportive and friendly community of like-minded students. This is the shortest, clearest path to guaranteed results and the only place that gives you the method, the materials, and the community. Discover how far you can push your skills further than you would at art school and for a minor fraction of the time and cost. Yes, it's real. For full details and for an exclusive 10% discount for YCP listeners, head to yourcreativepush.com slash evolve. Your Creative Push, episode 357. It's a proven process over and over again. We've seen over and over again all the student successes, people doing things they never thought they'd be able to do. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Michael Ray. Michael was one of the very first students to go through the Evolve Artist program, and with a full-time job, a family, and many other responsibilities, he has evolved his artistic skills to the professional level through Evolve. And he comes on the show today to talk about what his artistic life looked like before signing up for Evolve, and his red pill blue pill moment and why he decided to join the program. Michael was also a student at a similar online art program, and he shares the stark differences that he discovered between that one and Evolve and the major takeaway of how everyone starts at the same point in the Evolve Artist program. Michael shares how Evolve teaches you to see first and then apply what you see on the canvas and the extraction of variables by giving all students the same high-quality materials and old Holland paints. Michael discusses the many directions that you can take your skills once you have the fundamentals down, the commitment that he made to himself to be present and focused on the assignments, and how Evolve gives you the valuable freedom to be able to make mistakes. And finally, he shares how he's witnessed the proven process of the Evolve Artist Program through all the students who keep creating art that they never thought that they'd be able to create, himself included. I had a fun time talking with Michael, and it was great to get his insider perspective as a student that went through the Evolve Artist Program. Hopefully it will shed some additional light on the program for you and also inspire you to get to your own creative work. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Michael Ray. Michael, welcome to Your Creative Push. Thanks for having me. No, thank you very much for being here because I'm really interested in getting your perspective uh, on Evolve and uh, also hearing your story. But we've had, so we had Mitch on, we had Kevin on, and we had Piper on. So we've gotten a bunch of different perspectives from kind of the top, (laughs) so to speak. But it'd be really interesting to hear your perspective as a student going through the curriculum and almost through the curriculum. So I, I really appreciate you doing this. Sure, sure. Thanks for uh, reaching out to me, and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, man. Um, So maybe the best place to start, I guess, would be not necessarily at the beginning, but uh, maybe even before Evolve, before you got involved in Evolve, say that 10 times fast. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Like, what did your um, artistic kind of creative life look like going up to this? How involved were you in art, and like, how seriously were you taking it? Um, well, I've been involved on and off, uh, most of my life, you know, but it was never anything serious, you know, some, some stops and starts along the way. It's something that's always been a part of my life, but there was just never anything. Cause I grew up in a small town. There was never anything 
really outside of art class and school that I could connect with, you know, people telling me I had talent, but it ended at that and nobody really to, to push me to that next level and say, Hey, let's, let's work on developing this. It was always, you're so talented. <laughs> and maybe we can go into it later, but, but I'll say it now, but I, I have an aversion to that word just because it, you know, it assumes a certain amount of natural ability and that's it. Right. So you only have so much talent to work with. If you can't do any more, you must not have enough talent as the guy that can do even even better than you. So it, it kind of deflates you in a way, just like telling people you're so smart. You know? Well, I'm not as smart as that guy because I got a B on my test and not an A. Mm hmm. You know, other than, well, let, let's work on this. And one of the things Kevin talks about is, you know, artists are 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 trained or made. They're they're not born. Right. And it's true. Mm -hmm. You have to put the work in. So back to the original question, my uh, life, uh, you know, it, it's always been a part of my life from as long as I can remember, um, you know, at a young age, I, I, I won a few contests in school outside of school. Um, I, I loved it. I took as many art classes inside of school as I could. Uh, I, I wanted to go to um, university to be an art major. That just never worked out. And throughout the years, for, for a long time, I kind of set it aside. Then I would pick it up and, and work at it for a few months. And, you know, again, it was a talent thing. I only had so much talent to do something and I would get frustrated and, and walk away from it. And then I decided to... Uh, well, it's been, I think it was 2016. I, I think I picked up a pencil again and, and just started drawing and I haven't stopped then. I've drawn pretty much every day since, since like April of 2016. Nice. Uh, so, so I've kept with it and I, I found an online program that taught you how to draw and that eventually paint that went well for a while. And then I've then, then, you know, that, that eventually led up to a ball because that kind of fizzled out to the way that program was run. It seemed like that place had a brick and mortar school that got the lion's share of the, of attention, which, which it should. But it, I think some of the online stuff fell through the cracks there. So, and then, and then I, you know, I, I found Evolve and, and I've been running with that ever since, ever since um, 2017, late 2017. Excellent. And that, there's, there's a couple threads I kind of want to pull at, but the, the idea of picking it up and putting it back down and then picking it up and putting it back down. That's a theme that goes through most of my guests on this podcast and then most of my listeners as well. What was it about April 2016 that made you stay consistent? Like, was there a mindset shift or a kind of a life event? What was it that made you keep up uh, since then? I don't even know. It's just, I mean, for me, art is just, it's never been a want to do. It's been, I, it, there's this creative force, this creative energy inside of me that, that has to be dealt with. Right. So, it, mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. you know, I picked it up. It was, it was, you know, it, it went well. Cause I like drawing portraits. I drew up, I, I had taken a picture of my daughter. I'm like, you know, I, I should draw that. And so I, I did the gritting um, method and, and, and I drew it out and I, I thought it turned out pretty well. So I kept going. I had a few small successes, right. And that's what the evolve program is built on. It's, it's small successes. We, we stepped through the program that way. So with these small successes, I kept building and building and building. And I'm like, you know what? It's, it's the age of the internet things have changed. I'm going to look online for, for maybe, maybe there's a drawing program. You see things on YouTube, but I want something a little more solid. And I think I may have discovered something through YouTube or Instagram, somebody else doing the same program. And I looked at that and it was, it was an atelier style drawing course. And, you know, so I followed through with that. You did that for about a year and a half uh, before I found Evolve. But then it's just in, and in, in that program, it was an epiphany. I will credit it for that because nobody is something so simple that nobody had ever told me before is that you want to get good at drawing. You need to draw more. You got to draw every day. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, nobody ever told me that. Maybe, maybe that's something everybody else knows. I didn't know that, you know, I had the expectation of myself that I should just be able to sit down no matter how long it's been in between sessions and just draw like I want to draw. And if it doesn't work out the way I want, then it's probably my lack of talent. So that, I mean, really, it was just really that creative drive and the small successes that 
that kept me wanting to draw. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of an epiphany for a lot of people when they realize, okay, how much time actually has to go into any type of kind of creative endeavor in order to get to the level that the people that they admire are at. Or the, you know, when they see somebody that they really admire drawing live and how easily it comes to them, that can almost be really demoralizing because you you realize either like that, that ugly word talent, like you said, like either they have it and I don't and I never will, or I can get to that level, but I got to put in so many hours. Uh, and, but no matter what art program or what um, type of course you want to take or uh, what kind of journey you want to go on, you do have to put in that time. Um, so I think it's like you have to like really gear up with that somewhat harsh reality about all the time that you have to put into this thing that you love if you want to get to that to that level. And that's why it's really important to love <laughs> the whole process of getting to that point of learning, you know? It is, it is. And, and as a creative person, I don't think it, no, no matter what you do, I mean, music, art painting digital i mean there there's always room to grow as long as you as long as you're alive you know there there's always that guy that you know no matter how good he is he's looking at the next guy down the road thinking man i wish i was as good as that guy i need to i need to push myself more and practice more right now maybe take us back to day one or like the day you signed up for evolve what was that experience like and why why did you decide to finally kind of jump ship on one and go to the other to switch teams, so to speak. The red pill, blue pill moment, right? The, 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 uh, yes. My, yeah, I made my wife just watch that uh, for the first you? time. <laughs> yeah, last week. <laughs> but, yeah, which one are you going to take? That? And, that, and that's kind of what it was for me. Well, it, it, it kind of worked out well because the program I was in up to that, you, you know, they're homework checkers. I, I don't know what had happened. Some things have fallen through the cracks, like I said before where, you know, they wanted you to just practice drawing for, for two years and not touch any paint. And it would have been like a month. I tried to get feedback on my homework for a month. I'd been begging them and it kept falling through the cracks. And I finally got somebody to check it in like a, a person. So that whole month, it was based on a subscription. So you're paying by the month for as long as you're in the program. There's no this is a set amount that you're going to pay to, to get the, the program. It was as long as you continue to be in the program, the meter's running. So mm. I spent a whole month's worth of <laughs> worth of subscription fee waiting for feedback. And right at that time was when I was hearing about Evolve and I found it through Pencil Kings. And I don't remember how I found Pencil Kings, but I found it, did a couple of their challenges, you know, with Mitch and uh, came through that. And I think I even... You know, I bought his book through the program. I'd reached out to him just to let him know what I thought of the program and of his book. And just just to push myself outside of my comfort zone, just to just to reach out to to people that, that loved art. But I didn't know uh, which, which was outside of my comfort zone. So, you know, in, in that term, it was, it was pretty easy transition. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drop this. I'm going to listen to this guy. When I go into this, I'm going to commit myself to whatever preconceived notions I have about art, whatever I've learned up till now, this guy says, forget about it. Start from here, from, from the very bottom and work your way back up. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to have a very open mind about doing this program. And I still, to this day, even though I, you know, I'm at the point where I get my own opinion. Kevin says, when you first come into the program, you don't get an opinion, right? We kind of joke about that, <laughs> but it's true. He's like, forget it. You don't get an opinion. <laughs> You're starting at the bottom. And that's what I like about the program too, is everybody starts at the same spot. Other online programs, it's sign up, pay us the money. There's good content, but sometimes it's too much. And yeah, people may think they know a little bit more than they do, uh, but maybe they don't and they get frustrated and give up on it. So this is a clear cut path. And so that's one of the things that have attracted me to it. Everybody starts in the same place. It, it, it's a clear direction. There, there's a defined timeline uh, on when you'll be done, when you'll be at a certain point. And it really has worked out that way. So it, it's delivered. And I'm, I'm so glad I, I took the right pill. And, you know. Yeah. 
And, and I'm glad I signed up. You know, I have no hesitations about getting other people into it if that's what they're looking for. Yeah. And that, that's really cool too. Cause we've been at least the past three weeks, we've been talking about how you don't have to have any skills. Like you'd never even have to pick up a pencil or a paintbrush to have success and to get to that kind of professional grade artwork. But I, I've been thinking about, you know, what about the person like you who has had art be or painting or drawing or anything be a part of your life on and off for, for a long time uh, where you do have a bit of talent <laughs> and maybe you have taken other courses or you took even went to art school. Like, where does that leave you? Is Evolve right for you? And it's good to hear that everybody kind of, all you have to do is really say yes. And then you get kind of put on the path. You get put in the lane and all you have to do is really drive. All you have to do is walk the path uh, and, you know, trust in the, in the process. I'm a Sixers fan, so <laughs> trust the process, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, I think that's really reassuring that no matter where you are in your journey, you can jump on board and kind of evolve. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a great name for it too. And, and you do have to trust the process and it, you're building up very fundamental skills. You know, it's compared to learning, learning the alphabet, right. Before you can form words and then learning words before you can form a sentence and sentence structure, then you can build a paragraph and it, it's that way. And I think a lot of programs, even though they say they're fundamental, I see their fundamentals as there are things that are implied in there, like like value and edge sometimes. And that's the basics of, of the program that you're learning is value and edge and then later color. So if you know how to manipulate value and edge, you can create a painting, a drawing. And then once you learn to see those things, you're going to see them everywhere. And I've seen so many students coming up through the program, myself included, where we're learning to see first and then apply what we see to the paper, to the canvas. And that's so important because I've seen, uh, you know, I've been in, in college classes where the professor walks around and he'll set up a still life. And then he walks around with this cup of coffee. and says, just draw what you see. I'm like, well, what are we seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Explain what we're seeing here. Oh, just draw what you yeah. see. Right. And I see so many things, you know, he gets paid walking around to do that. But you're not really learning anything. Yeah, some people are talented. They 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 make a an old leather boot look like an old leather boot. But um, you know, in a few boxes there, they they might get lucky and get the proportions right uh, once in a while. But really, uh, I, I think some art instruction doesn't go back far enough or low enough. They, I don't know if they think it's beneath them or they don't know to teach from that level onward. But really, it, it all starts with value and edge. Then you add in color later. Well, Piper talked about when she was on how a lot of students, before they get into it, they're skeptical because they don't think that the program's <laughs> real. Did you right. have that experience? Um, a little bit, but not, I didn't need a lot of convincing. I, you know, I don't even think I talked to anybody. I'm like, I maybe thought about it for a couple of days. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And it, because I had the option in the beginning, in the beginning, it was the cheapest it's ever going to be. Mm -hmm. And they were only opening up a few spots. You know, I, I think I took maybe a couple days to think about it. I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a shot because I could, I could purchase each block on its own. And the thing about it that really convinced me is you get the materials, right? You, you get all the materials sent to you. You, you get the online videos, the membership and, and, and whatnot. But the thing that I really like about it is you're extracting as many variables as, as you can by getting the same supplies as everybody else, right? With, with, with the paint, the old Holland paint. So well, let's take that. It's not, I'm running out to, to the store down the road and getting, you know, the cheapest paint I can find. And then I'm having an issue with my painting. So they made sure to eliminate that. And that, that was an aha thing for me too, that, that somebody would do that because a lot of other programs, they kind of skip over and say, Oh, well, this is a list of stuff that I've used. I recommend this brand or this brand. And a lot of times they'll mix and match brands, but here it, it's the consistency of it that attracted me to it too. Right. Well, you mentioned aha moments. Were there any aha moments that you had um, in terms of what you were creating <laughs> where you're like, 
oh, wow, like I've never done this before or, oh, oh, wow, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. Like back to what I was saying earlier about um, value, learning value and edge and being able to see, being taught how to see these things. So you've got, you know, your values, how dark or light something is, and then your edge. So we're taught it's either a graded edge, which is, uh, you know, a a light going into a dark uh, softly, you know, like, like you'd see on a, on a ball or a sharp edge with a, a cast shadow. And compared to other art programs, I've, I've seen other art programs of like, Oh, you've got at least seven or nine edges to, to, to worry about. Well, here it's two edges, you know, those, yeah, you can categorize those as, as these other edges, you can break them off. But here, basically you've either got a form shadow, which is graded or a cast shadow, which is typically sharp. So just being able to see and, and, and see that just out in everyday life in, Trying not to try not to stare at people when you're studying the, the <laughs> cast shadows on their face, and I, I, you know, I'm like, I'm not a weirdo, you know. I, I'm just, I'm just looking at the light on your face, so, <laughs> so don't mind me. Um, but yeah, when, when creating it, the aha moment is, it's like, you know, it, it's about the light. The light is the subject. It's, and I, I think it was Edward Hopper that that had talked about that too. It's, it's just really is it doesn't really matter what the object is. The objects, yes, it, it gives you variety and, you know, things to talk about, but your real, your, your main subject is the light. And that, and that really hit me. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you, you could pretty much do anything. And, and I, it makes me look at paintings on a different way, like in museums, um, especially that how, how they're looking at, at the light and the light really is the subject. Did you have, like, you had the experience of being able to have that other program that you went through for, it's not like you just did it for a month. You were there for, you said like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Aside from, well, actually, let's compare that first. Because you said it took over a month to get feedback at one point. What's Mm -hmm. the longest it's taken you and involved to get feedback? Oh, maybe, maybe a day. I know. Well, if if, I I think Piper takes Sundays off, so (laughs) sometimes I'll submit stuff on Saturday and I I get it on Monday morning. And I know Mm -hmm. that, you know, I know they're not doing seven days a week, but the other homework checkers for, for, but, but I'm so far along that Piper's the one checking our work. Um, Mm -hmm. But I know pretty much when to expect her feedback. So if I submit it on a Monday evening, Tuesday morning, I'm refreshing the page because I know just about what time she gets in there to check homework. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's like that clockwork. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I, I pretty much know when she's going to be in there checking stuff. Um, and then throughout, uh, throughout the day, I, I can look at the homework, the, the wall, they have a thing called the wall. I'm sure you've heard mm-hmm. about it where you know mm-hmm. they highlight work. I'll refresh that a few times a day too. And I see some other folks now that they have more homework checkers coming in and different times of the day. So, so sometimes you can get your stuff turned around in, in, in the same day. So you can keep moving through the program. Right. And what, are there any other comparisons that you can make between evolve and that other program? Anything, any like kind of like stark contrast that you noticed? Well, it's, it's really the other program. There was a lot of, philosophy um involved i think uh there was and it was it's a great program it still is a great program i follow some of the people in it and, and you know maybe one day i may go back and see if i can pull out some some nuggets from some of the the painting programs but the fundamentals very wildly the evolved fundamentals are truly fundamentals you know you're learning value and edge and these things i think in the other program may have been a foregone conclusion because and, and there was a little bit of a inconsistency in language. I don't evolve. We use the same language throughout the whole program. So you're not confusing people. Some folks will use like, for example, the term value, they'll interchange it with tone. So what are you talking about? You're talking, Oh, well, this is a half tone. Well, what's that mean? You know, you want this to be a value five. Well, well, what are my other values? You didn't teach me my other values. What, what are you talking? Where's the value five land? But in Evolve, the language is, is very precise. It's very consistent. And the thing I like about it is fundamentals, as, as they start out, you're only, most art programs are 30 in, or here's 10 or 11 values if, if they're teaching you values at all. 
evolve, you only get to pick, you only get to choose from four when, you, when you're trying to make decisions on what value you're going to lay down. So you only get four choices, two light and two shadow. So it's not a lot of work to put in and it makes things easier to build on those small successes. You, you, then, then once you're cut loose for your full range of values, then you have a better idea of how to discern those things. But you're given a, a limited amount of options to work with, which is nice because it's guardrails, right? It's like the bumpers at the the bowling alley. So, right. so you're going to, uh, you know, you've got those up for a while to help you out. So you're pushing forward, you're learning, you're you're creating something, you're succeeding, you're making a little bit of a jump. And and I think you know if you you know if you're at zero, they say uh, when you start. If you make a 10% jump or 5% jump, I'm terrible at math, but by, by the end of the block, you'll be at 100%. You'll be where they want you to be. So you're making small little incremental steps. And then as they add new things, it's it doesn't feel like a giant leap, like the leap from black and white paintings to color paintings was, was a very small step. And then you add in colored shadows and then you, you, you keep going from there and then you add in your reflections and your highlights and... Uh, by the end of the, the third block, you've created, you know, a wonderful looking painting. You know, it's like you feel like you've really accomplished something. And then by the end of the fourth block, you're you're pretty much at a professional level. You could you could stop there and just keep creating and learning on your own and growing on your own if you wanted to. Right. Yeah, there's something to be said about, well, first of all, fundamentals. I mean, I'm taking uh, a couple master classes <laughs> and it, like they advertise it so well, but for me at least it's, it's been very fluffy, you know, it's, it's a lot of, like you said, like the philosophy, a lot of just kind of talking about uh, in particular, I'm doing writing courses and it's like, no, I wanted you to get down to the nitty gritty and get through th- some of the fundamentals and actually go through some exercises. But, but uh, also, uh, something to be said about choice overload. Cause I think for a lot of people that have gone through the YouTube tutorials or online tutorials, um, they don't set you on that kind of path where it's like, okay, here's like a very binary decision that you have to make in terms of tone or, or whatever. It's just choice overload. You can do literally anything you want. And then the, the other thing is like when you do have the question or you do make that like, you know, 5% mistake, now you have somebody that is actually watching you, is actually looking at your work and can answer your specific questions and solve your specific problems that you're having, the mistakes that you're making uh, as you're going before you move on. Yeah. And I, I think that's critical, too, that you bring that up is, uh, well, a couple things. Uh, choices, right? There's, what do they call it? Paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Too many choices. <laughs> you just you just freeze. Drives me crazy. I do that sometimes, too, with like if I get a free day, like Saturday, something, if I don't have something completely planned out and, or if I got like 10 minutes in between things, I'm like, what can I do right now? And I'm yes. like, <laughs> I can't decide. And then I end up wasting the 10 minutes trying to decide. But so you talked about choices and you talked about making mistakes. I think some people get into programs and, and their, their fear of making mistakes, it, it can also be paralyzing. Right. So one thing I've learned here and it, it is, you have the freedom to make those mistakes in the program. Once you realize that, that's liberating. And I don't know a lot of people do realize that, but here, here in this program, again, we have the safety rails up where we can make those mistakes and be corrected on them. And by the time we're done, you know, we, we've got to the point where we're able to see those mistakes and correct them ourselves. So we have the, you know, it, it, it is, it is a freedom. It is a freedom to screw up or make mistakes or whatever you want to call it. But mm-hmm. like you said, in those 5%, 10% increments, so you're not, you're not completely going back. And, and I don't know that I've, you know, I, I know I, I, I've made plenty of mistakes, but I don't know since I've started this that, that I've, done something where I've completely just like, I can't fix this. I'm going to, I'm going to trash it. I may get to a point where I'm like, I don't know what to do with it anymore. So I'm going to either ask questions or I'm going to submit it. But even being able to, to get to that point and not overwork it is a skill that comes with, with the experience from being in the program. Absolutely. Well, what would you say about like the experience of going through the coursework, but still having a real life? Cause a lot of people listening have Maybe they could find an hour a day, which is what the program suggests. 
what was that like for you in order to sort of find the time to, to do the assignments? Was it consistent? Were you doing like an hour a day or were you doing like a couple hours one day and like taking days off? Um, how did that kind of look like for you and how might it look for people that are signing up? Well, I try to have a set time every day where, where I, that I set aside for that or, or, or set days. I mean, now, now it's different every day, every day I can set aside time. You know, there were certain days of the week where I knew that, you know, we're not going to be home in the evening, so I can't do it. So, so I have to bump it to the next day, but you know, I'd got in the habit from the previous program. That was something that they had recommended. I learned from them set aside the time. So I was getting up early in the mornings to draw. I'll still do that. Now get up, draw for a little bit, at least 30 minutes a day. And then, um, in the evenings when I've got the time and I'm not rushed, I'll, I'll set aside time to, to paint and do, uh, assignments for the program It's just getting yourself into that habit and putting away things that maybe, maybe you didn't really need in the first place, like some TV time, you know, or, mm-hmm. you know, I love to read too, but I I'd like to sit and read a lot more than I do, but, but I do sneak in some time in between other things to read. And then in between family things that, you know, if we're out and about, I'll take a sketch pad or something just to either fiddle around with or, or play with some ideas or sketch something that I see. But it, it's just a matter of finding things that you can cut out that maybe you thought were essential that, that aren't really. And it's just, it's just make it a dedicated effort to do it. Right. What would you say that Evolve has done for your like confidence as an artist and sort of how you see your artistic life as opposed to before uh when you were you know it was you had t- the quote talent i know you hate that word but i keep using it no no i i know how you're using it though but yeah <laughs> you had some talent but um you were you know you were on again off again um how, what has your mindset been like since you joined evolve well trust the process for one because i still go through times where i'm i get the ugly painting phase and i'm like mm-hmm. <laughs> is this yep. gonna work out and, you know, it, it usually works out. It may not be a masterpiece, but, but it works out to my satisfaction to where I turn it in. And I, I know that I, I can get things through that phase. And I know that, um, you know, what it's done for me is that outside of Evolve, also, I, I can continue to learn and grow by experience. Because really, I think the analogy was by Kevin one time is it, it's knowledge versus experience. And most of it is, is experience. It's just time in front of the easel. And if you put the time in with the proper knowledge, then you're going to have a good result. And so it's given me, it definitely has given me that confidence to, to move forward and to know that I can be creative, create, create things I want to create, not worry about the process about how I get there. It's just the ideas, how I, how I form the ideas and is it, is it the right idea? Is the right composition? You know, those things, but the actual process, I, you know, I know what I'm looking for with value adds and color and those three things. So I'm armed with those. I, I can do pretty much whatever I want. And, and not only that, but be able to jump into different mediums. Hmm. So I, I can take this, this and move. I've played with, with digital. Um, I'd like to get more into digital work, but this is definitely giving me that foundation to move into other mediums. That's awesome. Yeah. You mentioned, choice overload before and paralysis by analysis. And I think a lot of people get that shiny object syndrome. I'm guilty of this too. Seeing really talented artists doing amazing work in other mediums uh, or, you know, perhaps digital or doing charcoal or there's a million different ways that you can take your, your skills, especially when people are starting out, that sends people to like have their heads explode (laughs) because they don't know which, which direction they want to go because there's so many different cool directions they can go. And they kind of gloss over the fact that they need to get their fundamentals in order. Mm -hmm. I think that's why evolve is so great because, you know, once you do get past block four, then really you can go in whatever sort of direction you want to. And as you do kind of dip your toes into other, uh, forms, you actually are doing it from a level of experience that you can actually judge it correctly as opposed to getting frustrated with a new medium because you don't have those fundamentals in order. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's no shortcut around experience and, you know, evolves not a, it's not a magic pill. There's no magic pill out there, but I believe it, it is probably the shortest path that I've found 
to be able to to do that and and being able to commit to that. I, I think you you know you mentioned the other mediums, charcoal and digital, and and people wanted to do. You know, I I've seen students even get into the program and they're like, well, I think I want to do digital now because I think it'll be faster. Well, it's not going to be any faster. You're still going to have to get the experience in. It's a, people think of digital sometimes as a shortcut, but I see digital artists that that may have done that shortcut, but then they're coming back to learn fundamentals from either Evolve or another atelier where they're learning the life drawing, the, the, the painting fundamentals coming back to uh, traditional art uh, realism, if you will, to learn those fundamentals, to bolster their skills. And one thing, you know, we were talking about joining the program. One of the things that I decided to, when I, when I joined the program is I want to commit myself to the assignments and getting through the assignments. As long as I have an assignment, I'm going to commit to that. Even though I may have this other idea I want to try out, in the meantime, I'll, you know, I'll write it down and push it off to the side, think about it, but I'm going to focus on my assignments and I'm going to be, I'm going to be present. And, and that's, that's a critical skill too, to learn is, is being present at the easel, not letting your mind wander. And of course our minds, you know, everybody's mind wanders from time to time, but, but trying to be so focused, you know, cause there for a time, uh, I think for most of block four, I didn't even listen to music. I, I didn't listen to podcasts or, or or stream any anything online you know i was focused so focused i just sat in silence and focused on the painting so so it's really important to uh, to be present uh to to focus yourself and, and that's what i committed to do is just focus on that to get through it and not not let all the other interference come in of, of my own projects that i want to do because there'll be time for those later hopefully yeah on the on this podcast we talk about trying to uh not necessarily drown out the the noise that that gets in your head, like kind of the the negative voices in your head, but sometimes it's so important to to go into it pure, <laughs> kind of yeah. to have like the open the, the silence so that you can have that sort of inner dialogue and really analyze um, kind of your process and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It makes it um, not necessarily easier, but it makes it a little bit more effective. I think it's great advice. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think effective is definitely both the word I would choose. Yeah, you mentioned the wall. What what was the experience for you of you know being alone in the comfort of your own home doing this, doing an online course, doing an online school, but still having a form of community in your peers, in your other students? Uh, what was that like to be able to see the other work and or interact with uh, other people going through the program? It was a good thing for me. It helped me to grow personally uh, because I'm not naturally somebody that, that's that outgoing to has to be around my friends all the time. You know, this whole isolation thing is, is nothing to me because I'm typically, <laughs> you know, even though I've got a family, I, I'm typically on my own and doing things, doing things my own way. And, and me too, man, I'm thriving. <laughs> all right, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, in my normal job, I work from home anyway. So mm-hmm. this was, this was nothing new to me, but it was nice because it, it pushed me personally to make those connections with, with people of the same mindset to help, you know, and, and I've been able to help mentor a few people along the way, answer and well, not completely mentor, but, but, but answer, answer questions, you know, since mm-hmm. I'm further along in, in aspects to get myself out there and be, be a help to others and encourage, encourage other people. So you see that and you see, you know, you mentioned the wall, you get stuff up on the wall, you get, you get stuff, you know, you, you put yourself out there in the community to encourage other people that, Hey, yeah, this is possible. You know, I, I put some stuff out there recently and we've had a, a lot of new people come on board. So I want to throw something out there to show them that, yeah, Hey, what you're doing now may seem like a, a rote exercise, as, as Kevin calls it, but 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 it's <laughs> not. You know, it, it's all leading up to this. So hang in there; you you can do it. So it it's helped me to make make connections with people that that are good. You know, I don't know that I'd be talking to you. So this is good, and, and also as you know, as I step out of the outside of evolve, and I'm looking, you know, to maybe expand in, into different areas to to maybe do some work it's good to be building those connections and, and talking to people about art. Yeah. Very cool. Would you have any other advice for new students, people that are just starting out? Maybe they just signed up. They're waiting for their first box to come. Anything that you maybe didn't expect when you joined the program that 
uh, words of advice that you could give to people? I don't know if there's anything I didn't expect. Is I mean, it, it, because I came into it, I I forced myself to come into it with a very open mind and try to not have any set expectations, right? But one thing I didn't expect is Kevin and Piper to be as available. And not that I was thinking that they wouldn't be. My experience with other, and even you look today, other online courses, you have to pay premium dollars mm -hmm. in order to have a conversation or have you know the, the top person look at your work or critique your work. You have to pay a lot of extra money to have that happen. And they're both, you know, all, all the instructors, you know, um, that Kevin and Piper especially are involved in the community available, you know, if you have questions. Uh, so that's something that I probably didn't expect is how, you know, I, they, they really, really want you to succeed. It's not, it's not that they're, they're seeing how much money they can make off the program. It's because they truly care about art. They truly care about their students and they want you guys to succeed. Kevin gets really excited. I know when he sees his students succeeding, he's getting across, he's teaching the things that he needs to teach. If he feels like he's not, then, then he'll back up and, and look at, well, maybe I'm not teaching it the right way to get it across. So he, you know, he's, he's able to reassess himself still and say, well, let's, let's try this a different way to see if you understand it this way. Yeah, that was one of the most inspiring things when I was talking to him. He said he has put in big tweaks to the program at least a dozen times. Um, and I think that's just a testament to him as a, as a teacher, you know, seeing that a certain way wasn't necessarily effective and not sort of blaming it on the students, you know, blaming it right. on himself as the, as the teacher. I think that's really inspiring. All right. So now we have what I call the final push. And let's do this a little bit differently. Um, usually it's, you know, just advice to, to somebody just to, to pursue their creative passions. But let's make this a little bit more evolved, <laughs> so to speak. Okay. Um, what would you say to somebody that is that is on the fence about Evolve? Maybe they're maybe they've checked out the site, but they're still not sure that it's right for them. Or maybe they're just not quite ready to take the red pill. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what advice would you give to them? First of all, I tell them, you know, if they're, if they're on the fence, reach out to Kevin or Piper because, because I know that they, they're open and willing to talk to people. And I know, I know Mitch does this too, to talk to people who are on the fence. So first of all, you know, talk to them. Um, you know, I'd relate my experience to them, uh, but I would also caution them that, you know, if you're looking just to dabble, you know, it may, maybe stick with YouTube, but if you're really looking to learn, you know, you have to be willing to put in the time because most of the program is you sitting in front of the easel. So it's not, it's not all this, all this knowledge. And then you, you work for a few minutes or a couple hours and then, and then voila, you're, you're a magic, you know, magically, <laughs> a, a, you know, a, a master artist. It's lots and lots of hours. So if you're willing to commit the hours and you really, really want this, yeah, go for it. But just, I would just caution them that, you know, in order to get good, you, you have to put the time in. It's, it's the knowledge versus experience. There's, there's a little bit of knowledge and you have to have the experience putting that knowledge in, into, into play in order to, to come out with the result. But, but it's a proven process over and over again. You see, we've, we've seen over and over again, all the student successes, people doing things they never thought they'd be able to do. So yeah, I guess, I guess that's what I would, I would tell them. That, but also, I mean, come into it with an open mind, a growth mindset, and just also caution them that try not to give in to that to that voice <laughs> that, that creeps in sometimes that says you can't do it. I, I still have it once once in a while that it'll creep in, but I know to let it wash over me. And, but just just have an open mind, a growth a growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Yeah, I mean, we talk about that on the podcast all the time. Is, is trying to you know. Take that voice for what it is, but that for all artists and all walks of life, we all get that voice. So hopefully this podcast for, you know, longtime listeners have been mentally prepped <laughs> for that yeah. voice as they, uh, as they enter the program. Yeah, it's real. So it's real. I just have to deal with it. Michael, thank you so much for spending your morning with me. I appreciate it. And for sharing your story and telling us a little bit more about your experience in Evolve. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Uh, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to me.
Absolutely. And for everybody listening, you can check out Michael's work at Michael Ray Art on Instagram. And we'll have that all linked up at today's show notes page, yourcreativepush.com slash 357. Michael, thanks again. Thanks for having me. My thank you to Michael for coming on the show and for giving us that student perspective of Evolve. It was great to be able to hear from somebody who's in the trenches of the program, somebody who's seeing all the successes around him, but who's also had incredible growth and success himself. And I've got to say, if you haven't checked out his work, you definitely should. Head to the show notes page today, yourcreativepush.com slash 357, or head to his Instagram, Michael Ray Art. If you want some proof of concept, he is creating some truly breathtaking and amazing work. And it's such a testament to not just the Evolve program, but to his hard work and dedication. And that, folks, is going to do it for our little month here of Evolve. We're going to close things out with a webinar tomorrow to answer any questions that you might still have after these four episodes. I'll be there, Kevin will be there, and Mitch will be there. And if you want the invite, head to yourcreativepush.com slash webinar. Even if you listen to this after June 2nd, still go there and I will send you a replay. And if you have any remaining questions, I will answer them or I will forward them to Mitch or Kevin to answer for you. And of course, if you are ready to sign up or if you want to find out more information, see some student examples, see some before and after uh, photos, head to yourcreativepush.com slash evolve. Going there will get you an additional 10% off an already very affordable, complete online art education. And on next week's episode, we have Murr Lafferty. Murr is a writer, and her latest book was Solo, A Star Wars Story, which was the official adaptation of the film. And she is also the editor and host of multiple podcasts, such as Escape Pod, Ditch Diggers, and my favorite, I Should Be Writing. And she comes on the show next week for a deep dive into many different resistances that we have all dealt with and a few tips, tricks, and really hacks that I've never thought of that I have used and implemented in my creative life since talking with her. If you want to find out more about Murr, you can head to her website, murverse.com. And on Twitter, she is Mighty Murr. And of course, we'll have that all linked up at today's show notes page. But that's all I've got for you today. So hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done and to bring your artistic skills to the next level, to a level that you never thought you could. I love you all so much. And remember that the universe needs your creations and you are the universe. We'll see you next time. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to subscribe to YCP on your favorite podcast app. Or better yet, join the newsletter, where you'll get each week's episode, YouTube video, inspirational resources, and a sneak peek at the following week's guest, all in one weekly email. Again, that's yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe.